Let's do it. I'm with you. This is all I do know. Through the years, this is mine to follow. This is hope, and it's all I know that I have seen it through. This is all I can do. The story is that depending on who you ask, it's like where does it begin? Because it can everything snowball from something else. Group love came together in Greece. And my brother was chatting with a bunch of our surfer friends in Venice Beach. This Greek guy named Tassos Tigonides with a Hari Krishna patch and punk rock outfit was meditating on a skateboard. Well, long story short, uh, my brother and, and, and him and I became really close friends. He ended up living on our couch for like six months. And during this time, you know, he revealed to my brother and I that he had properties in. Uh, the island of Crete. They're obsessed with this idea of this place people can go and not have to think about money or whatever the normal routines that kind of suck that creative energy out of them. Andrew Weston's older brother, he came in to buy a painting for me because I was late on rent and I was really stoked on that. He didn't end up buying a painting, but he said, I want you to come and be the first artist at this, it's called the Icarus Artist Commune. I was like, I want to go, but I just fell in love with this guy. Would it be weird if I asked him? He was like, dude, you can invite anyone as long as they're an artist. We were both in kind of dark, struggling kind of places in the city, personally and artistically. I called Christian up and was like, this is probably like a little forward and weird. Do you want to come to Greece with me? Which I jumped at the opportunity to do. He was like, yeah, let's go to Greece. At dinner in New York with Matt Wesson, and he was like, dude, I got this house for you guys. There's a studio, and we get there, and he's living in the house. <laughs> and we're in the downstairs, like, in a cot. And we're, like, in this cot, like, just getting our stuff together, and Matt and Sid come in. How long were you guys there before I got there? A couple days. We saw Andrew the first, the first day we were there. Probably about 25 people ended up there. Musicians, a lot of musicians from London came. It kind of made me think of, you know, the, the movie The Beach, where like it's like it's a secret place and we're gonna go. And I was like, oh, I don't know, man. That sounds like some kind of hippie bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, Ryan was studying abroad in the Czech Republic. When I was in the Czech Republic, he was he had just gotten to Crete, and he said, "There's these amazing people here. You, you got to come if you have some time off." And, and I kind of thought, no, it's, it's crazy. And the first two days, I was thinking of leaving because we had this tent in the middle of nowhere. I didn't know anyone, and then. I met these just really interesting people, and over the next few days, I met Christian and Hannah, and then I met Andrew and Ryan, and we became, we just became connected. 
there was something about that summer. I don't know. I, I can't say that I immediately I was like, this is gonna be, this is gonna change my life, you know? But there was something real powerful. There was something when we all met, we were at that, we were all at that same place in life. So there was like an honesty in our friendship and an honesty in the way we met that led to this really unique friendship that kind of is the early group, that group love, that bond. I forget that back then, Sean didn't have I a met beard, you man. with no beard. Yeah. We don't talk about those days. That's the <laughs> well, funny part. When I secretly wanted to become in a band with Sean, it was right around that time when we started hanging out and talking about the 90s and like yeah. bands that really influenced us. And, uh, we were all really impressed with each other, but I don't think we ever really thought even at that point, the five of us have to be in a band. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't yeah. seemed to I definitely was, was far yeah, away was from crazy. being in a band. It was, I was yeah. like drawing you guys. I didn't ask for it. You give me heart attack. I didn't want to care. And then I saw you there. Been working like I'm excited to play. It's going to be so much I'm fun. Excited. I'm excited even for the acoustic show here. Seesaw Tour was initially an idea that our manager, Nikki, 
brought to us uh, while we were in the studio doing this album. And he said he wanted to do something different. He didn't want to do the typical, you know, follow-up first album tour where we just go up another level in venues. We can play theaters and, you know, bigger places. We built up such a fan base of people when we go to cities now. We know the names of our fans that, that, that came to our first shows and, and we can look out in the crowd and, and recognize them. And so by the, doing the Seesaw Tour, we really wanted to play into the people that were there from the start. And two nights in a city, do one electric, one acoustic. A lot of the songs are written on acoustic guitar anyway. I'm Ryan Rabin. Uh, we're sitting in a stairwell at the McKintrick Hotel. Um, about to do a sound check for the acoustic show tonight. Is this the restaurant? It's carriages, dude. Look at Drew's merch set up in the carriage. It was not like the picturesque European vacation that I thought it was going to be, going to Crete. And then over the rest of the time that I was there, just the five of us just were really drawn to each other and made friends. It's crazy. This feels like we've gone back in time. Hi. Hi. You, got, you got to see this place. I, I'm it's seeing insane. it a little bit right now. It's crazy. Yeah. You guys got up. And that was kind of it. We left, and I was like, great, going back to school, going to continue just being a producer. And I did, and I started, I finished school, like, right after that. And I started, you know, writing and working with other artists and really intent on never going on tour again. And never having to, to you know, be in a long-term relationship as an artist with other artists. And then Christian, Hannah, and Sean visited Los Angeles. And a year after we all met, uh, we all went out to California. And then when I when I came out to America, when we when we decided, right, let's go to LA, let's try and make this happen. Let's get out of here. We don't have a full-time job still. What was supposed to be just one day of recording and hanging out turned into everybody basically living in my parents' house for the next two, three weeks or something like that. Driving around in a car, playing music and stuff, and just sh shouting group. So that was our band name, group. And uh, it was because we always, when we rolled around together, we'd be like, group, this is the group. The name, there's a full moon in the middle because we all went to this crazy cave while we were in Greece. The eclipse of the moon that night. I was just immediately blown away by how different everyone was, background-wise, and also just what they brought to the table musically. Working with Ryan was amazing because he was like the first producer I'd ever worked with. And he just made, came up with amazing ideas. You know, Sean play a song, I was like, oh, that's cool, let's do that. Christian play a song, oh, that, I love that one, let's do that, let's move this around, let's do that. And then it just, and everyone was so open-minded at that point. The band just kind of like, it just started picking up momentum really quickly. It was like a fun project. I remember doing the artwork for our EP. We had taken everybody's sort of past songs, um, and turn them into what eventually would be group love. Andrew Wesson from Topanga Beach, California. I grew up wanting to be a pro surfer. That's what I wanted to do. Somehow my parents introduced me to this real hippie, like, guitar playing guy who kind of like, he had this little shop in the, in the like, little alley. Got me really into like old surf, surf music. I'm just a kid from Southern California who just somehow got to, you know, live his dreams. Yeah, I left my body in a sea of people and that's just how I leave it. Yeah, I met some
Happy, I'm from London. I'm actually where I'm from, like Shepherd's Bush, and I'm from a very working class area of London. And, and uh, the people I knew were not like these blonde, uh, beautiful surfer looking people. Sean and I are like the amigs, we call each other. We used to go have a bunch of wild nights together. And sometimes we're just like fucking boring old book club buddies who just talk about boring books and shit. And Andrew's like one of my oldest best friends ever. So we're the Bear Cubs because my mom calls us that. I've been playing with him since I was 14 in literally. He's always been, in my opinion, like one of the best drummers in the world since he was like 15. Anna at one point is like my sister. At one point she's my like annoying like best friend who like is too straight with me. And then at one point she's my like partner in crime, you know? Christian can be very quiet at times. He can go off and be deep in thought for, for a little while. And then all of a sudden he'll come out with the most crazy creative idea. I mean, I break it down as we're the Spice Girls. Everyone would see the Spice Girls and identify with one of them. That was what was special to them, which I remember. And I feel like our band is so uniquely that way. Like, you watch us on stage, everyone has a favorite. Everyone has someone they're like, I love all you guys, but like, Andrew is the guy that like, I really relate to, or Sean, or me, or, you know, whatever. Everyone has that person. It's crazy, because I'm in a band with four guys that have been in so many bands. I've been playing in bands for like 15 years, you know? My last show before Group Love was, I literally flyered literally like around and like put shit up on poles and like flyered outside the club and like rallied as many people as I could and 10 people showed up. Two of them were my parents in the back, you know? Could have done it my way, but I did it, and I wonder why. Yeah, I'm itching on a phone until gray. Yeah, I'm scratching on a thermostat. Yeah, I'm giving up on the in bay. Yeah, I'm letting go of what I hate. My name is Christian Zucconi. I am the lead singer and guitar player in the band called Group Love. Well, where we are right now um, in the Lower East Side, it used to be a club called The Annex, and now it's called Tammany Hall. Um, it's, the story for me started here um, when I played with my last band called The Loke. I was painting in New York. It's like 2008, and I had been locked in the space, like kind of going a little stir crazy. And my good friend who I shared the studio with was like, dude, come see this band tonight. They're epic. We were playing a show here and Hannah came out um, of her painting studio. I guess what I've heard is it was super hard to get her out of there. I was at like 10 p.m. covered in paint. I was like, dude, I don't want to go, but I went. And we met outside right on Orchard Street after the club. And it was an amazing first meeting. Here it is. This is where we first talked to each other. That's crazy. This has never happened to me before. I'm not one of these girls, but I literally fell like in love at first sight. It was like there was like this glowing orb around him. And uh, it was something I've never experienced before. And that's kind of how it started. Everyone remembers it really like specifically, but it was a really big like foggy romantic time for me. It was like a honeymoon.
it's a very special place to us. A lot of our sound uh, comes from this city. I remember the first time rolling into New York and being like, oh my god, it's in New York City. back in New York and walking around, it's so trippy. I feel, first of all, so much more confident. I feel like I'm the person that I was privately with my friends now, publicly. I mean, I'm still the exact, I feel exactly the same. There's something interesting in struggling here, but uh, there's something really satisfying in being welcomed into the city. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Oh, Caroline. What you been fed? Cause I've been walking in a dream. What you mean? Where I've been? I never knew I get so red. I got so red. Raspberry on the ferry. I was feeling kind of seasick on that boat. From an early stage, being called Group Love and being uh, touted as a Los Angeles band, we got very much uh, coined as a sunny, happy, you know, happy-go-lucky California band, and which, which was interesting, especially me being from London and, and Christian being like New York truck driver, you know, that was his job when, when, when he wasn't playing music, and, and Hannah being a struggling artist, for, for us three especially, it was, it was very weird being, oh, you're sunny Californians. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that was part of the music and part of the, what was behind the title, Never Trust a Happy Song. My name's Sean Gadd. I play bass in the band Group Love. 
Uh, Hannah Christian were living in bed and that's the first place I'd stayed in New York, which was great. I remember uh, the train station was Gates, I think, and they lived on a, a street called Quincy Street. And, uh, and it was just an amazing experience. Sean came in September, and this is the first place he came to in America. This was we took my, him right here. My welcome to America right here. Yeah. With the three little tiny the three you can't little see. And a couple, a couple of the songs from the EP were written up there. It's a, a Cruel and Beautiful World, which ended up being on the album. Get Giddy, which is on the EP. Betty, because, you know, Patrick Betty. Gates, we even, like, dropped the neighborhood. The, Talk about a it couple. It takes place about a couple of meeting on that corner down there. So, yeah, it was a big part of the early kind of songs that ended up being on the EP. Yeah. We're written here. Hey. Yeah. How you doing? Ooh, I used to see him every day, and I used to holler at Rembrandt, you know. <laughs> I see him drinking coffee on the stoop every day. She had paint all over herself. <laughs> How you doing, Rembrandt? Yeah. Rembrandt. Yeah. It's crazy to be back. I know, it's really right. weird. I feel like I'm about to, like, go up into our spot and be like, oh, <laughs> the this... ceiling fell through. Uh, <laughs> We had a lot of leaks up there. And Hannah first started singing for the first time when we got back from Greece. We were completely different people, still living in the same spot. But our lives had like changed completely, you know? Something kind of surreal about sitting on that stoop and just, I don't know, I feel exactly the same as when I left, but I have all this, all these, this, all these tours under my belt now and all these friends and all these stories. And it doesn't feel like, Anything's changed, but so much has changed. It was just a strange experience. I think that's just naive to think that just because group love became a success that there was nothing before that. Everybody knows that everyone has a history.
Yeah, I see. What it is. What it is. What it is. What it is. A goddamn hopeless ending. But I don't mind. There is a love that's bending. And I'm not afraid. You guys just go normal. Yeah. I don't even know what I do it there. But I will tonight. It's our show. Are we yeah, it's right here, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, give me a great guys. show tonight. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks for coming out. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye, Leah. Bye. We met Andy and the rest of the Manchester Orchestra guys, I think it was in Jacksonville at a, at a radio music show, you know, they, where they have 10 bands or so. So he sent us this song. And it's kind of the same way Group Love already writes. So it was kind of easy for us. I don't think Andy had ever done it before. Uh, yeah. I guess those are your next ones. Uh, uh, that hurt. Are you going on that? Wow. Wow. It's ginger, that's honey, that's tea. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Is that correct? Uh, it's a hand of mine. I know. What is it? I'd rather be what? I'd rather be a hippie than a hipster. Yeah, I'd rather be grooving than grinding on. Grinded on? Grinding. Yo, grinding, dude. Yeah, I'd rather be like fucking psychedelic than than uh, working. Like in a nine to five in a cubicle. Grinding. Grinding on. The grind. Grinding on works really well, too. All good. Two bucks, two bucks. And then the stage is perfectly balanced, two on either side. And then big chorus. Yeah. There was kind of a song that was fairly pre-written and that was being brought to group love to like group loveify, basically. I'm levitating. I'm levitating. I'm levitating. I'm levitating. And then, and then Andy, you got these levitating. huge fucking wires that are be strapped to Sean at that moment. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over the entire audience. Hannah Hooper. I'm in the band group Love, but I'm also a painter. Collaborating off the bat is something that music is totally different 
It's just like being with a bunch of people in the immediacy. Like when you could be jamming and all of a sudden you all together know that a song is coming. It's an incredible feeling that when you're alone in a studio painting and you know like, holy shit, that something amazing is happening. There's really no one there to share it with you. There's definitely a solitary element with painting that, I don't know, maybe gave me the patience to be a musician because I feel like I have that, so then I'm excited about collaborating. But they come from the same place. Like when I paint, it's super gestural and really expressive, and if I overthink something, like if I overthink a song or overthink a painting, it's definitely not gonna be good. So there's that natural kind of thing that you can't predict, you can't plan for it. It ha happens in both mediums. Honestly, we are five very different people. And so I think what you get with group love is that you get a representation of that throughout the music. Strange being back here. Yeah. I love it. Right up back was so weird because it had been, you know, four, three or four years. It was almost like everything that's happened since we we left there didn't happen, and it was like this weird dream, and it felt like we were like kind of almost back in the same place we were, and nothing had happened, and this was just like a weird ass dream. And seeing them there was like, you know, I could just see myself waking up the next morning and be like, Yo, Hannah, I had this crazy dream. Like when we got back, like Andrew and Sean and. And Ryan, we're here from Greece, like walking on the street, and there's a there's a filmmaker there making a documentary about this band we did start, you know? So it's kind of been like that. For me, it's different. I feel like I had a similar route, but just in a different medium. So we bust our ass for 15 years, or whatever, doing what we do. So you can't plan when it works, you know? But there's something in our sound that people are responding to. Life, I really believe, has its chapters, and this is like a really positive chapter in my life. That's how it comes. 